This time, let's tackle the vertical speed indicator and its functionality. First, let's take a look at the diagram of the instrument and see its parts and then we will discuss how it actually works. The VSI is a fairly simple instrument that reads how fast you are climbing or descending. It has a diaphragm that is connected directly to the static port and therefore is filled with direct static pressure and a calibrated leak that slowly equalizes the pressure inside the chamber of the instrument with the outside pressure which is the same as the pressure inside the diaphragm. So the way it works is really simple. While the diaphragm always has the exact outside pressure, the chamber of the instrument slowly equalizes to it because the calibrated leak always leaks pressure in and out at a given amount. The difference in pressure will expand or contract the diaphragm which in turn through gears and levers will twist the dial and tell us how fast we are climbing or descending. Now let's say that we're taking off from sea level on a standard day. As we start climbing, as you can see from the animation, the diaphragm instantly reads the outside pressure while the chamber of the instrument slowly tries to catch up with it. But because the calibrated leak has a smaller entrance, it takes longer for it to drop the pressure. This creates a high pressure in the chamber of the instrument and a low pressure in the diaphragm. High goes to low and the diaphragm is compressed giving you a reading proportional to the difference in pressure. The faster you climb, the greater the pressure differential and the higher the instrument reading. In this case, around 1200 feet per minute. This is also why, as you probably heard before, you should never use the VSI for leveling off because the VSI still needs time to catch up. If you were to wait until the VSI read zero to pitch for straight and level, your altitude would probably be quite a bit lower than what was assigned to you. The time it will take for the VSI to read accurate again depends on how fast you were climbing or descending. The opposite obviously happens as you descend. The chamber of the instrument will now be at a lower pressure than the one inside the diaphragm and this will expand it and give you the descent reading on the dial. One thing you might have heard is that if in dire need of an alternate static source, say the outside source froze and the alternate static source is clogged, you can break the face of the VSI to regain the altimeter and airspeed indicator's functionality. The reason you break the VSI is because it is the least important and not because it is the only one of the three pedostatic instruments not required by FAR 91205. I mean, if you lose the pedostatic instruments while in IFR, that would definitely qualify as an emergency and in an emergency you can take the FAR book and throw it out the window. You do need to keep in mind though that just breaking the window of the VSI is not sufficient at all because not only are you using the air pressure from inside the cabin which is lower than the outside causing the instruments to read higher but being that the static air is being fed to the other instruments via the calibrated leak, you would have incredibly sluggish and delayed readings, not the best scenario. What you need to do is break through the face of the instrument and also puncture the diaphragm itself, with a screwdriver for example, therefore creating a hole big enough for the air pressure to instantly equalize. And there you have it, that's how the VSI works. As I said, a fairly simple instrument. On the next video, which will release probably within a week, we will tackle the only instrument on the airplane which works solely by precession, the turn coordinator. Till then, happy flying and blue skies from Pilot Training Solutions.